Hi everyone! Today we're going to read The Bell of Atri, illustrated by John Goodell, adapted by Sarah Toast. Long ago, in a little town called Atri, smack dab in the center of town, there hung a bronze bell. The townspeople called it the Bell of Justice. It was no ordinary bell. It wasn't rung on holidays or the mayor's birthday. This bell was to be rung only when someone who had been treated unfairly needed help to right the wrong. The people of Atri were proud of their bell. They kept it polished so bright it looked like gold in the shining sun. Anyone, rich or poor, young or old, tall or short, could pull on the long rope and ring the bell to have their story heard. When the mayor heard the bell ring, he would put on his special robe and call for his assistant. All the people would gather in the town square to see how the mayor set things right again. Most of the time, the people of Atri treated each other fairly and honorably, so the bell was hardly ever rung. After many years, however, time took its toll on the bell's rope. The rope had worn away so much that only the tallest person could ring it certainly not a child. One day, the mayor was on his tour of the town. He liked to walk around and greet all the townspeople. On this day, the mayor saw the sorry state of the bell's rope. This will never do, exclaimed the mayor. We need a new rope immediately. Everyone searched high and low, but they could not find a rope that was long enough. The mayor had to send for a new long rope from the town on the other side of the mountain. Meanwhile, the mayor's assistant brought a long, tough grapevine from his fields. It would have to serve as a bell pull until the new rope arrived. On a farm just outside the city limits lived an old knight. His glory days on the field of battle were long since over. Now he spent his time out on the farm. The knight had once owned beautiful horses and hunting dogs, for he had taken great delight in hunting foxes and deer. Now the old knight hardly ever hunted. He had sold his dogs and all his horses but one. That one horse served the knight faithfully in many battles in his youth, so the knight kept that horse for when he had to make a fine appearance at a festival or in a holiday parade. Although the old knight had plenty of money, he no longer was willing to spend it to take proper care of his farm or his one old horse. He preferred to spend his time sitting at his table and counting his money instead. The knight didn't care that the stable was falling down and that the poor horse didn't get any attention. The day finally came when the old knight wouldn't even buy his horse enough food to eat. The horse tried not to make too much of a fuss, but his tummy was empty. The knight decided not to keep the horse any longer. He opened the pasture gate and sent the horse out to wander the countryside. It was a hot summer and the sun had dried up the grass. The horse did not understand what was happening. He only knew he was hungry. When he couldn't find enough to eat at the side of the road, he didn't know what to do. The hungry horse went from farm to farm looking for something to eat but there were fences around the fields. The horse could not reach any of the hay or fresh grass. He just kept walking. Not wanting to be a bother, the horse did his best to stay out of everyone's way. He wandered the back roads to find some grass to nibble, but he couldn't find enough. He became thinner and thinner. One day, the horse was trudging slowly along the road into the town of Atri. He was feeling very sad. The horse walked along with his head hanging low, hoping to spot a tuft of grass or two, a nibble here, a nibble there, and without knowing it, he was at the edge of town. He looked up from his place on the road. The horse could see right into the center of town. Then something caught the hungry horse's eye. He craned his neck forward to be sure he was seeing correctly. Sure enough, there was a juicy green vine hanging down from a bell. A bright green leaf almost touched the ground. The horse couldn't believe his eyes. The 
bright leaf looked especially delicious to the hungry horse. He went the rest of the way into the square. No one in sight, so he walked right up to the green vine. He took the lowest leaf in his mouth, closed his eyes, and began to chew. The leaf was so tender and it tasted so good. He couldn't remember the last time he had eaten anything so delicious. The hungry horse then worked his way up the vine to the next leaf and ate that. He began eating faster. When the horse had finished eating the leaves within reach, he began to pull on the vine so he could reach the leaves that were higher up. When the old horse pulled on the vine, the bell of Atri rang out loud and clear. It seemed to say, ding dong, the night did wrong. The good people of Atri heard the bell of justice ringing. They quickly gathered in the town square to find out who had been wronged. When the mayor heard the bell, he put on his robe and called for his assistant. We must go and make sure justice is served, said the mayor. They went to the bell. The people were astonished at the sight of the old horse tugging at the vine. The horse was so hungry he didn't even notice the people. I remember this horse, said the mayor. This is the old knight's horse. This noble steed served the knight well for years in many a fierce battle. He was always a brave and loyal horse. Now he is a hungry horse without a good home, said a little girl. The horse deserves justice just as much as any person, said the mayor. Send for the knight. The knight was brought to the square. Then the mayor looked at him and began his address. Knight, said the mayor, this horse was your faithful servant for years when he was young. Now that he is old, you have turned him away to find food and shelter for himself, even though you have plenty of money to care for him. The townsfolk shouted, hear, hear. The mayor continued, Knight, I hereby decree that you should pay for this horse to be properly sheltered and fed for the rest of his life. The townsfolk cheered, hip, hip, hooray. They knew justice had been served. At the knight's home, the mayor's assistant took enough of the knight's gold to pay for the proper care of the horse for the rest of his days. The people of Atri used some of the knight's money to build a new stable for the horse. They took turns making sure the old horse always had plenty of hay and fresh water. The children were especially fond of the old hero. They were always coming to feed him a tasty carrot or sugar cube. Sometimes they would ride on the horse's back and pretend that they were knights. The horse felt very loved and he was very happy. Just before the people of Atri were for the most part honest and decent, they treated each other well so the bell of Atri was seldom rung. But the story of how the old horse rang the bell for justice was told often. The end. The horse had served the knight well for a long time, and now it was the knight's responsibility to take good care of the horse. A person whose life has been made better by the acts of another should help that other person when help is needed. We all have a responsibility to one another. Returning care or helping someone brings a sense of joy and strength to the helper. Think of a time someone has helped you. Is there someone you can help? Keep your eyes open for a chance to pitch in and help someone out. Someone out. It feels good to be responsible.